All right, let's see if we can find ourselves online. Although I do need to be careful that I don't end up with feedback. All right, I think we'll be okay. All right, everybody. Hi, this is Cheryl Critchbaum, and we are about to talk about our award winning student authors. These are all uh, classical conversations, Challenge B students, or at least they were last year. They've all grown up. They're in a different program this year. Uh, but last year, they took the uh, CC Challenge B short story course. And so we're here to celebrate them. So we're, but first we're going to all go to our live stream right now and we're going to find it and we're going to share it onto our pages so that all sorts of other people can watch right along with us. Because we need to show off all this great work that these students did. I'm so excited. These guys worked so hard. And so we just have to show off what they did. All right, so we are using Zoom technology tonight. And uh, so here we are live streaming on Facebook. I am Cheryl Critchbaum. I am an award-winning author, a speaker, and a writing coach. And I am also a homeschooling mom. And when we were in Classical Conversations Challenge B doing the short story assignment, I realized that I uh, had some writing skills that would help the students. And so I put together this course and invited people to join me a few years ago. And actually it was the COVID year and I was the Challenge B director for that year because I'm, as you can tell, not afraid to use technology. And uh, I had no intention other than to just uh, guide students through the story through the story writing process, which every Challenge B student has to do during the second semester. And it can be an intimidating process and a, and a big assignment. And they're doing that in addition to learning about Darwin and learning uh, all about uh, logic and logic trees. They're studying Latin and they're preparing for mock trial. So they do have a lot on their plates during second semester of Challenge B. And then this project looks daunting, but when you break it down, it's really not that difficult. And what I hope the students realize is as they go through it, they have a lot of writing skills that they did not realize that they had. And it was just a matter of bringing everything together. And I found it such a delight to teach the class that I wanted to keep going, but also the students really blew me away with how well they wrote. And so I published the first uh, set of short stories, uh, award-winning short stories, and that was Feet. So these are the 2021 uh, award-winning authors. And then this year we had a much larger class and therefore many more people who entered the contest. And so we have many more student authors. So here's the book, it's called Adventures in Time, Superior Short Stories by Student Authors. And we have 37 short stories in here because they weren't competing against each other. They were just trying to impress me and they did. They did an awesome, awesome job. And we have so many different kinds of stories in here. We have historical fiction. We have animals with personification. We, um, we have fantasy in here. And the students brought all of their great ideas together. They wrote them well. They're clear, they're concise, and they're compelling. And all I did was guide them through the process. They're the ones who figured out how to do all of this. But they had a little bit of help. Right, students? A little bit of help. And I'm not talking about myself. And I know, students, I didn't prep you for this. But I am going to remove my pen and ask you all to turn on your microphones. And you know what I'm going to ask you, right? 
All right, turn on your microphones. We're gonna do it on three. We didn't rehearse this, everybody, so bear with us. We're gonna see if we can still do this. It's been a while. All righty, on the count of three. One, two, three. I am the Holy Spirit advantage. That's right. We are all authors and we all have the Holy Spirit advantage because we're Christians. And so we all learned and walked through the process together and learning how to work with the Holy Spirit in writing our stories because God wants us to be successful. And God made these students successful. And I'm so proud of them. You guys did such an awesome, awesome, great job. All right. So I want to make sure that I tell you all the stories that are in here. So I'm going to, going to tell you a few stories. And then I'm going to uh, have the students tell you a few things uh, about their experience in writing their stories. And then I'm going to tell you a few more stories. And so that we can get to the point where I've listed all 37 stories uh, tonight. And obviously not all 37 authors were able to join us, uh, but we are going to hear from the ones who could. All right. So we have Whiter, uh, White as Snow by Adeline Pope. We have Clues to Normal by A.G. Kelly. We have Perfect Contrarity by Andrew Hogan. I kind of get the feeling, guys, he likes logic. What do you think? Yeah. All right. Clueless by Adrian uh, Paul Carpio. We have Cornerstone by Callie Jansen. We have Capture by Moonlight by Christopher Swigard. All right. So let me ask you guys some questions here. Because I want, I want everybody to hear from you about how it feels to be an award-winning author. So Lauren, tell us. How did you feel when you saw your name in print when you got the book? Soren on here. Nope, no Lauren. Oh, sorry. Okay. I think she's going to be joining us at some point. She sent me a note saying that she was ecstatic and she said, I honestly didn't think I was going to win. Uh, and then I also asked her if there's anything that she wanted to tell the rest of the world. And she said, you know what? You just got to trust God throughout the process. Right? Because we do have the Holy Spirit advantage. Awesome. All right. So, Gemma, uh, what was it that um, really stood out for you and helped you through the writing process? Um, uh, in the writing process of writing my story, I think what helped me is taking some time to just think about it and also, um, lots of trial and error. So writing something and then deleting it and then writing something again and then deleting it. Um, so it just took a lot of editing and fine tuning and refining. So, yeah. Good. Good. That's what professional writers do, right? They don't just yeah. uh, write it once and say, yeah, it's done. They go over it and make sure that it's well written so that it's clear and concise and compelling. Yeah. Good. Awesome. All right. Um, now, you had a note also, you had kind of a longer note, Gemma, about what it is you wanted to tell the world about writing a short story. You want to tell us? Um, do you want me to just read the thing that whatever I wrote? You can read it if you'd like, or you can just tell us whatever you would prefer. Okay. Um, well, I think I just wanted to say mainly that at first, my mom, she actually made me take your course. Um, and I wasn't too um, thrilled about that because there is like a little bit of extra work you have to do, of course, if you want to enter the contest. Um, but I think in the end, um, I was really proud of myself that I was able to um, finish the story and um, uh, and that I won. So I think um, just to try hard and believe in yourself is really important. So, yeah. Oh, good. Awesome. 
Yeah, the course is not intended to be extra work. It's supposed to make the whole process easier. But you're right. If you're entering the contest, then you're probably doing a little extra work. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so more stories. We have The Lion and the Lamb by Sierra Moraine. We have Finding Hope in the Ashes by Daniel Benjamin. Um, we have The Eagle's Resolve by Declan McNew. We have Missing in Dark Depths by Derek Garland. We have uh, Trapped. Oh boy, Drew, I know you just told me how to pronounce your name, but I always have to stop and think. Okay, Drew Laguerre, the Laguerre, oh, right. Laguerre. Laguerre, there we go, thank you. Trapped by Drew Laguerre. And Night to D4, excuse me, B4, uh, he, clearly I'm not a chess player. Night to B4 by Ezekiel Chamberlain. All right, so uh, Frankie, are you on here yet? Have you made it to us? All right, everybody needs to pray for Frankie because uh, he is stuck on the road. I think there was a flat tire or something. Uh, and so he isn't able to make it here yet. So I'm going to say wait and trust that he's going to make it here. All right, but I do believe we have uh, Christopher with us. And Christopher uh so tell us uh how how the course helped you out um let's see here i the the course really helped me just break it down um into man break the story line into manageable pieces uh helped me to um be able to wrap my head around this giant thing that we were supposed to do it was kind of thrown at our faces and said all right you got to write a paper between one and five thousand words and first you're like wow that's a lot and then I heard about your class and how you you broke it down in a very logical way and that helped me so much and I thank you for that well you're welcome you're welcome. Yeah, when you break it down into manageable pieces, it doesn't seem like such a big undertaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you never know, you never realize how many words you actually write until you get done with the whole thing. And then you have your word processor tell you how many words you wrote and you went, wow. Huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, cool. Great. All right. Uh, we have Olivia Faith Manga. Uh, so, um, you know, tell us, Olivia, your thoughts on, um, the biggest aha for you as you were going through and writing your story. Um, I would say that my biggest aha moment was realizing that I could do this with the help of the Holy Spirit and that whatever the story ends up being in the end, it's all according to God's plan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole lot easier to do this in partnership with God rather than think that we have to do it all in our own power. Yeah. Good. Yay. Good. You got the whole Holy Spirit advantage concept. You guys are awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. More stories. We have Trials in the Isles with Frankie DeMaio. Love the, uh, the, rhyme there we have the hiking club with Gemma les Prance. we have reflections by hannah classen we have where the shadows fall by hayden we have a christian endeavor by ian oh boy Catronus. and we have the flourishing forest by isabel shiley and of course that was with alliteration right the flourishing forest and we have the road to success by jacob russell all right. Do we have, yes, we have Zach with us tonight. Good. So Zach, um, you know, you talked a little bit about uh, the writing process. You want to tell us your impression, your thoughts? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I don't necessarily enjoy writing, um, but your class made it a little bit easier to 
write the short story, the way it broke it up into little segments through the weeks. So, it so became something I, I enjoyed doing a little bit. <laughs> so what what I love hearing, Zach, is that you don't enjoy writing, but you still ended up with an award-winning story. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's awesome. Good. Well, I'm hoping that uh, you learn some skills that you'll be able to put put to use in the future, even though you have no intention of becoming a writer. Uh, yes, ma'am. I've learned a few skills that I hopefully do intend to use. But Oh, good. Yeah, well, there are a lot of ways that you can put this to use, right? You don't have to be a professional writer. Uh, but uh, there are a lot of storytellers out there in a lot of different ways. And I think that, um, well, I'm looking forward to you coming back in five years and saying, hey, Mrs. Critchbaum, this is what I ended up majoring in or going off and doing a career in. So I want all of you guys to report back. I love hearing those stories. All right. Uh, A.G. Kelly wasn't able to join us tonight, but she said that when... Um, uh, she got the book. She was really excited, especially to see in the front of it where it says copyright A.G. Kelly. She was just like, my name, my name next to copyright. That was really cool. All right. Uh, let's do a few more uh, story titles. We have Home Again by Jocelyn. We have Down to Earth by Carol Lynn. We have The Courage of a Soldier, written by Kristen Roberts. Notice that was about a soldier, and it wasn't written by a guy. It was written by a young woman. I love that. The Courage of a Soldier, by Kristen Roberts. Uh, the Mysteries of Winchester, Pennsylvania, which goes to show that we have some mysteries in here, too. The Hike, by Lucy Wojtaszek. And uh, I apologize if I got that wrong. Uh, written in Stone by Madeline Broach, uh, Best Pet by Mia Moraine, The Turn of Events by Mariah Tipple, and by the way, Turn there is spelled T-E-R-N. Uh, so I love the animal and uh, personification. She took her love of birds and turned it into a story. We have Unexpected Turns by Nathaniel T uh, oh boy, I, I'm not even going to try Nathaniel because I'm not going to get it right. It's Tamari. <laughs> I love it. I don't want to hear you say it. That's great. All right. So Nathaniel, however, uh, spelled turns T-U-R-N-S. So unexpected turns. We have Born of Fire by Olivia Faith Manga. We have The Reason I Hate Cats. And uh, I'm just going to call you Dare. Uh, you're not here to correct me on my pronunciation. <clears throat> I would most definitely have you tell me your name because I would get it wrong. We have One Wish, Big Adventure by Shira Matthews. And we have a few more, but first I wanted to hear from Shira Matthews as long as we're here. So Shira, you uh, had some things that you wanted to tell people about writing a short story. I did. Um... I think uh, when it comes to writing a story, um, you just have to just be yourself and like um, write what you want to write about um, as long as it's Holy Spirit inspired. And if, if you, if you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in it, then you'll always come out on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's always faithful and he wants you to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and you know, we often pray to God and we ask God to change circumstances and he, and he can. Uh, most of the time he works through people, right? And so that's the power of the Holy Spirit working through us, 
you guys did that in writing your story. It's, it's the power of God, power of the Holy Spirit working through you to write your story. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Uh, so Tatum Swearingen, did I get that right? Yes. <laughs> Close enough, she says. All right. So how did it feel to uh, find out you were an award winner? It was it was great. I was very excited, and I had said that it, my story looks more professional in the book than it did just as a document on my computer that I had typed up, mm -hmm. and it made me feel like a real author. <laughs> it is very empowering, you know, to open up that package and see your name on the book. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, but you also um, you had a had an aha moment that you wanted to share with us. Yes, the biggest aha moment for me was developing the personality of the main character because it just helped the dialogue come smoothly, and I knew exactly what she was going to say in any situation, and I didn't have to sit there and think like, oh, how would she react to this? How would she react to that? Because I knew her personality and what she would have said if that situation happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Yeah, you kind of like, you can step into the character, right? Yes. Yeah, that's cool. All right, awesome. All right, let me give you the remaining stories on here. All right, we have the Abnormal Blue Book Day. Now, if you are in classical conversations, you know what a blue book is. The rest of the world probably doesn't know what a blue book is. And uh, Shannon's not here to explain it to us. So does somebody want to tell the world what a blue book is? I, I guess I can. So basically in what we do in classical conversations is every week in challenge, there are two semesters. And at the end of each of those semesters, we take a blue book test, basically reviewing everything that we went over. So it's, probably exclusive to challenge i'm not sure i've heard it anywhere else but that's usually what the blue book is mm -hmm. yeah so the blue book is a notebook with a blue cover and blank pages <laughs> and so uh you're answering questions you're bringing together all of your uh everything that you've learned and you're bringing it all together and then expressing it uh using pen and paper or pencil and paper with a blue cover and so she's got quite the adventure called the Abnormal Blue Book Day. All right, we have The Plant That Grew Down by Tatum Swearingen. We have The Hidden Football Star by Trey Castilla. And we have The Great Chase by Tyler Dietrich. We have Patches by Victoria Carroll. And what I love about that story is that she loves quilting. And she figured out how to write an entire story around her love for quilting. And it's it's not boring. You would think a, a story about quilting would be boring. And that is so not the case in her story, which is why she won an award. All right. And then we have The Edge of the Sword by Zach Wilson. All right. So Drew Legere. Uh, so tell us what you learned in the process of writing your short story. Okay, so I learned an important thing is to visualize your characters and the settings, like what they look like. And yeah, that was, it's also important to like visualize what they would wear so that you kind of get a sense of their personality too. That's mm -hmm. something. So it seems to me that you kind of saw um saw them in your mind and then just had to figure out how to express that in words would that be correct or did you do it yeah. in it was pretty much like you said yeah yeah it's like if you can see it in your head almost like it's a movie makes it a little easier to figure out what to write to help other people get in your head yeah awesome all right so uh, Nathaniel, you had something um, that you wanted to share with people, your thoughts on writing short stories. 
Um, yeah, what I wanted to share to everyone is that I would highly recommend that everyone should write a short story at least once in their lifetime because it will help you really learn how to express yourself um, and to learn more about yourself and especially to rely on God and the Holy Spirit to lead you through the short story process because it's not always easy at times. Sometimes you can't find anything what to write or you really have to rack your brain. Think of what you should write next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't have, as Christian authors, we don't really have too much of an excuse for writer's block, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So if we're, if we truly are co-writing with the Holy Spirit, the goal is for words to be flowing and coming out. Uh, and if they're ever not, then we, you know, go spend some time with the Lord, do some worship, do some prayer and uh and open yourself up to um getting inspiration from above now you also had a comment though about your grandpa and how he fit into your story you want to tell us about that oh yeah i really like that i could decide what happens to like the characters and to control the outcome and one of my characters was inspired by my grandfather and the character was gramps and I inspired like his actions through that and how he felt fit into my life. And that's how I honored him. That's awesome. I love it. I bet you your grandpa's so, so honored and so excited about your story. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Jocelyn. Uh, Jocelyn couldn't join us tonight, but she said that in the class, we put God in the center of writing, which made such a difference for her. We were writing for God and not for people. Uh, and she also pointed out, you know, you're in control of the whole story. She said, every time I, I would write something suspenseful, I just sit and look at the page waiting for someone to tell me what happened next. Only remember, I had to write it. I love that. All right. And then Daniel, uh, let's see. You you had a comment about class. Yes, I did. What about it? Yeah. What, what would you like to share? OK, so I think one thing that really stood out to me during the class was, aside from all of the stuff that we learned throughout the course of the year, was what we usually said at the beginning and the end of every class. And that was when we always said, I am an author and I have the Holy Spirit advantage. I mean, you heard that right before we got on and started doing this. But what really stood out to me about that is just how impactful it is. Even though it's a small little sentence, it really holds big meaning because it's kind of like God is co-authoring your book without being on there, but he's just in your heart and your mind while you're writing it. So that's why it really stood out to me in that way. Yeah, you summarized it very well. I'm going to take you with me on the road to tell other people about the Holy Spirit advantage. That was perfect. Thank yeah, you. yeah, that, that's exactly it. That's exactly it, thank you. All right, let's see. Um, is Madeline? Maddie, there you are. All right, so, uh, so you had a comment about the class as well. You wanna tell us what your thoughts were? Oh, well, um, I stated the fact that um, I feel like um, the class did a really good job at taking like a huge um, assignment and putting it into little baby steps. And eventually it was all pieced together to make a, a masterpiece. And I feel like at the end, now that everyone's finished, we're all very proud of what we're done and that we stuck with it and we made sure to keep God first, which was very important throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you should be proud of your work. You guys worked hard and you produced really good stories. Thank you. Powerful stories. Yeah, you're welcome. Well-deserved. All right. Who did I miss? Did we get everybody who's on? Frankie, are you here yet? No, Frankie. Okay, so this is what Frankie told me. <laughs> he said, writing this story was my, one of the most fun things I ever did. And I think that's actually a great way for us to end. So just to emphasize, these students 
worked hard in a really tough semester when they already had a really big workload. And uh, they brought writing skills together that they already had, even though they've had to write summaries of things when they were, you know, kind of middle schoolish, and and then they've been having to write essays for the last couple of years, and they're probably like, oh, I hate writing essays. I'm so tired of writing essays. Uh, but they also learn skills in the process of writing essays that they were able to bring over to writing short stories. And uh, and they may have written stories when they were in elementary age, uh, but this was really all about bringing it all together and uh, making a more developed story than what you would do in elementary school. And honestly, what I see in these student authors is better than a whole lot of adult published books that are out on the market right now. So these students are going someplace and uh, we all need to be watching because they're going to change the world with their Holy Spirit advantage. I'm really excited. All right. I want to hear it. You know me. I want to hear it one more time. So turn on your microphones. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. I am an author at the Holy Spirit Advantage. Yes, I am an author and I have the Holy Spirit Advantage. All right, thank you everybody for joining us. Good night. Thank you, good night. Hi, thank you. Ms. Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night.